Welcome back to DIY with Dave. Uh, it's been a while since I've posted any projects, and let me just say this year has been a crazy one. And, uh, you know, it's been hard to find time to uh, get everything done I want to get done, and also time itself seems to just flutter by. I have a hard time sometimes in this coronavirus quarantine world of, of knowing, you know, what day it is. <laughs> Don't mess with me, poor chap. <sighs> what day is this? While I haven't been posting a lot of projects, I've still been doing a lot of projects. A lot of them around the yard here. And the project for today's video are these animal-proof raised garden beds. So in this video, I'll show you how I built them and everything I learned along the way, including some of the things that I would do differently if I were to build them again. So be sure to stay tuned to the end of the video for that, as well as an update on my garden and how it's been so far this year. <music> first things that I did when we moved into this house about five years ago was I built these planter boxes. We had some similar ones in our old house and I, I really love to garden and so I wanted to build something like that. And these planter boxes have worked really really well. We planted herbs that just come out here for some fresh basil, oregano, or chives or whatever. We've also planted tomatoes and had some success with those over the years. But I've always wanted a bigger garden. The challenge that we have here where we live though is there's some woods right out back behind my house and there are tons of critters. We've had everything from turkeys to chipmunks to rabbits to deer to shrews to um, gosh what else raccoons, possums, groundhogs, all sorts of critters and animals um, that will come in and, and eat our garden if we were to plant one. Uh, our tulips every year just get mowed down by the rabbits and the deer so um, I wanted to build some planter boxes that would help protect against them and also allow us to grow the kind of garden that we want to grow. And so I set out to build some of these raised beds uh, that would be critter proof and would allow us to have the garden that we want. What I'm using is a, called hemlock. It's a soft wood, it's a, a pine tree, an evergreen tree, and it is fairly weather resistant. I chose this wood because it, it's, it's oftentimes used outdoors. A lot of old barns in Pennsylvania are made or the siding is made from hemlock. In order to make sure that these will last a little bit longer, I did cover them in this pure raw linseed oil. Uh, this isn't boiled linseed oil, this is a pure raw linseed oil and it's safe for use on garden beds. Um, you could even consume it if you wanted to. Uh, some people do as like a dietary supplement, but um, I wouldn't, at least not in this industrial can. <laughs> I stain all the boards in that linseed oil and that will hopefully make this last uh, much longer. So let's first talk about dimensions. I made these boxes three feet wide and that was just so that I'd be able to reach in from one side. If they're any wider than that, it'd be tough. I made them eight feet long and I made them about 12 inches deep. So for the first two boxes that I built, I ended up using pocket holes to join them together because the, the boards weren't quite wide enough to make the boxes as deep as I would want them to be. And so I joined all of the boards together on their edges using pocket hole screws. For the third box though, I thought that the design was much better. I first of all used one board that was 12 inches wide, which was great, uh, but then I also used these posts or support pieces that I screwed the boards into and I think that is a much better way of doing it than joining the edges. In fact, if I were to do it again, I wouldn't even join the edges of the first ones to each other using pocket holes. I'd probably just leave them and just screw them into supports that I would put around the planter box. Once 
once I had the, the rough outline of the boxes built, I then took chicken wire and put it all along the bottom. The reason for this is because I didn't want any kind of animals digging up from underneath to eat the roots or eat any of the plants that I had. And so again, that's one of the aspects of being uh, critter proof. Once I had the chicken wire in the bottom, the boxes built, I placed them where they were meant to go. Now, I didn't worry about the grass. I figured that any dirt on top of it would kill it, which it did, and it was fine. From there, I filled them with dirt. The next thing I did was to build the cages that would go on the top. I built these also out of hemlock. I just cut the pieces down to about two inch widths and then joined them together with uh, some wood glue and uh, pocket holes. After that, I took chicken wire and wrapped it around the edges. Now one thing that I learned with the first box was that I kind of cut each section with, of chicken wire and tried to add that in, but by the end I just kind of wrapped it all the way around and then stapled it in as I went and then cut off the excess and that seemed to work much easier. Once I had the cages built and the chicken wire wrapped around it, then I added these hinges so that I could open up the cages and actually get to the plants to uh, weed or harvest or add fertilizer, whatever else I needed to do. Now I also this year grew a lot of my own plants from seed, which was exciting. Uh, I'd never really done it, not quite on this scale before. Um, and for the most part, the plants really, really worked out. I planted a ton of tomatoes and um, we've already had a, a few harvests. We've had hundreds of tomatoes so far. We've made um, some, some salsa and canned it. We've made some uh, delicious spaghetti sauce, about uh, 10 or 12 jars of spaghetti sauce and canned that. Uh, we use that all year. We also used our own uh, basil and um, our own oregano and uh, it was great. I'd say the biggest tragedy are my cucumbers and my zucchini. Uh, they went really well at first. Uh, we had some pickling cucumbers, made some pickles. Uh, we had some regular cucumbers we used in salads. Zucchinis that we made all sorts of things with. But we actually were devastated by bugs. We had some cucumber beetles and, and uh, cucumber bugs attack our plants and, and kill most of them. We were only able to, to, to um, save one of our zucchini plants. And uh, all the other zucchinis had borers and beetles and uh, all sorts of stuff. So I think for next year we're going to take some precautions uh, to prevent some of uh, those uh, critters from killing our plants. Uh, I think we'll, we might do some covers and some other things like that that'll that'll keep them off and hopefully we'll actually be able to, to harvest uh, more zucchinis and cucumbers before they all get killed. But in their place I have planted a few other plants including uh, lettuce which will be good uh, for the fall. So let's talk about what I would have done differently. Now, I think for the most part, these planters have worked really, really well. Um, the challenge though is that because of the way that they're hinged, the plants inside them can only get so tall. And that was a big problem with my tomatoes, especially because uh, they are growing up high and I really would have liked to stake them and have them grow as high as they want. Uh, and so if I were to do it differently, I think instead of having for tall plants, instead of having it hinge on one side, I might actually 
make them have doors or something like that that would open that would allow me to get to them but still keep the critters out. So that might be a change I'll make even to these same planter boxes for next year. Which I already talked about how I would build uh, the first two differently. Uh, these posts that I built for the third one worked very, very well. And so I would have done all of them in that same way. The other thing that I would have done differently is I, I would have been more careful about the boards that I selected for the cage. Now, because of the limitations I had, I, I couldn't be super picky about it because I only had so many boards, but there were a few cases where I had actually cut right through a knot and that caused a problem. And I actually had one board split that I had to kind of shore up with some glue and some screws to make sure it actually didn't break. I also would have planted a little bit differently. I would have planted my taller plants towards the back and had the shorter plants up front like lettuces and other onions, things like that. Um, I did that with the tomatoes, um, but I didn't do that with my peppers. And so I have to be careful every time I open and close the cages with peppers that I don't actually uh, break branches or other things like that. So all in all, how was it? I think it's been great. It, it has actually brought me a lot of joy I feel like a, a gardening nerd now to be constantly reading up on how to do things better, how to, how to plant better, how to get more yield. And uh, I love coming out every day and just checking out on, uh, checking out my plants and seeing how they're doing. So it's actually done a lot for my uh, coronavirus quarantine to have something to, to look at every day and see growing and to use. Uh, it's, been, it's been really, really great. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope that you learned something from it. I hope that your 2020 is going well, uh, despite the world that we see around us. Um, and if you did like this video, make sure that you give me a thumbs up, make sure you subscribe to my channel, check out some of my other videos. I'll be posting a lot of other videos on the projects and things that I've been doing this summer. So be sure to check those out. And I uh, hope you guys have a wonderful fall and we'll see you in the next one.